G'day, welcome back to uh, part four of my milling machine build. Uh, if you missed part three, there's a link up there now, you can go watch it. I'd like to welcome all my new subscribers uh, and I hope you enjoy the content of my channel. This episode will be, I'll be making the spindle and some bearing housings to go with that and, uh, and also the carrier to put all in. So follow me just here because I've got to weld it all up and we'll get started. Alrighty, so this is the plan stand. I'm going to uh, weld these two together. I'm just toying with the idea of welding a, a gusset down the inside of it just to strengthen it up, but I don't know if it really needs it or not. Uh, I'm going to bore two holes, one in there, one in there. Cut this thing in half and I'm showing up two bearing housings that will sit down into these two holes. And uh, I want to bore the holes first so that I can machine these just a little smaller than the hole. So there's a little bit of wiggle room there too uh, get, so I can get the alignment right. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do first up. So I'll get all this done. And then I'll go and put this in the trusty Shepak bandsaw and cut it in half. And uh, get started on that. Well, all welded up. I forgot to mention I was going to block the end off as well. These two holes didn't have to take some chewing out and I'm a little surprised they're not more oversized than they are. There's a 54mm cutter and the way it was cut and I thought it was ending up about 60. Just chewing away at it. But one's 54 and a half and the other's 55 so I'm reasonably happy with that in the end. So there's plenty of meat there to, for bolt holes. Now to be perfectly honest I feel like a wrung out sponge today so I think I'll have the rest of the day off and go and have a poppy nap and get back into this tomorrow. So that'll do for today. Alrighty, so uh, got a better night's sleep last night. Don't feel quite so knackered today. Anyway, so uh, what we're going to do is cut this thing up. And I'm, I may be uh, cutting things a little fine here, actually. This is the bearing and a seal for the bottom. And I need, really need about a 10 mil, 10 millimeter uh, ring around the outside here, which I'm not really going to get to bolt it with. So anyway, we'll see how I go. Uh, the other end, not so much of an issue because it's a smaller bearing and uh, won't be so much trouble. Anyway, we'll uh, go and cut this up first and then get on with machining it. All bloody Chinese rubbish. Just went to uh, clamp this up before and the damn thing split on me. Oh, well, I just got the two nice flats on here. I can get a shift on there and pull it up until we can do something about replacing that. But anyway, this will take a while to cut through this. Checking it's still on track. Well, I said uh, more Chinese crap before. This is German brand, but made in China like every other damn thing. Well, it didn't cut all that square. A bit wobbly. Even this back edge is pretty wobbly too, but uh, anyway, I'll square all this up, we'll get it right, and I'll bring it back while I'm machine. Well, quick update. Um, I've faced it off, I've cleaned that bore up, uh, and I just cleaned the outside up. What I'm going to do now is turn this down to 54 millimeters or thereabouts to fit into that hole, because I'm not happy with the way this is gripped here. I originally made this uh, gate hinge live centre especially, expressly, to make these parts. But I can't get it up close enough. So what it really needs is an extension and I'm going to pull all this out of there to make one now. So it'll just be fine cuts, fine cuts, fine cuts until I get down to 54mm. And then I'm going to spin it around, put the other jaws back in so I can grip this thing a little better because I'm not at all happy with the way it's been held in there. So that's where I'm at. Uh, it's a lot of material come off there, so I won't make you sit through that. I'll bring it back a little later. Well, this is taking forever to, to get down to uh, 54 from 75. Anyway, hopefully I think this is the last pass. A little bit of luck. A 
Bernie says. Oh, 54, that'll do me. Champer inside and out. File to the rescue. Right, oh, no. that's uh, never to be seen. That's up inside the uh, the housing. Also made a made a decision that I'm going to modify that that housing I made yesterday. And anyway, so now I'm going to. Uh, get this out of there, change the jaws, turn it around, and we'll work on the front end with the bearings go. Alrighty, so I've flipped this around, I've done the bare minimum to it to uh, clean it up, chamfer the edge. Now I've got to bore it out to 52mm, thereabouts, and about 16.5, 17mm deep. Clean that centre up to starters, and we'll uh, go from there. Alrighty, along with a uh, change of camera battery, I have a change of plan. Um, when I was machining the back end here, I've bloody come too far this way, and this section here now is a good two to three millimeters too narrow. So it's uh, it's not really suitable to be using it for the bottom one, which is what I was making. So I'm going to switch to the top one, which has a smaller bearing, which will overcome the uh, the issue that I was going to have where there wouldn't be much meat left between the board out section here and the diameter of the bit on the back. So that's where I'm at. Keep boring that out till I get to this size instead of the 52 mil I was going to. I'm going to 47 now. One thing I best to check is the depth. They're both about the same, there's only about a millimetre difference between the two, so this will be okay. I'm going to measure that actually. So we've got nearly 10 millimetres to come out of there yet. Quick sanity check. Oh, 39 and a half. Alrighty, so I'm getting very close to a finish size here now. Now I'm getting nervous because I don't have anything. I don't have any internal mics big enough to, uh, to measure this, so it's, it's a vernier and uh, I do cross my fingers sizing. <laughs> anyway, let's see how we go. This thing's actually very hot at the moment, I'm tended to, uh, to leave it till tomorrow morning and finish it once it cools down. I reckon I'm just about on size here at the moment. Yeah, I reckon once that cools down that'll be a tap in fit. So I might just put a stamp from there and leave it at that for today. In fact I probably could have done without that last pass coming back out, but anyway we'll uh, find out in the morning when it cools down. Well, it's cooled down and didn't shrink like I hoped it would, but anyway, uh, I was getting around that, so um, I'll fix that later. Uh, it's one thing, I had another bad night last night, uh, my problem is I go to bed and 
my head kicks into gear and I can't turn it off because I go into design mode and problem solving mode and uh, one thing I thought of and I'm glad I did is because of the step in there uh, you'd never be able to knock that out of there because you can't get in behind it to knock it out so what I'm going to have to do is down in the bottom corner is drill a couple of holes in from the back so you get a pin punch in there and knock it out so I'll do that later as well now the other thing I want to do right now is mark the face with a small ring because I want to drill six holes in here to uh, to bolt it on with so I'll put a little mark on there so that I have somewhere to follow Alrighty, so that gives me my uh, circumference line to uh, to mark out. Uh, I won't be, I won't bother videoing this second one today because it'll be to use a, a bit of Aussie slang, same shit, different day. So uh, I won't bother videoing that. And the next things I video might be uh, the shaft. But before I make that, I'm, I'm going to modify the housing, which will shorten the shaft up, make life easier for me. Just to prove I haven't been sitting on my ass all day doing nothing, and I mean all day, it's now 3.30 in the afternoon, so it's taken me pretty much all day. There's the second one done, and uh, I've pulled up a little shy of where I did yesterday, the other one, but I'm just a little worried that that is too tight. But anyway, I'll find out tomorrow, because like yesterday, it's, it's only just warm now, it's been sitting around for a little while. Ah. I was singing the praises of those new desk car tips one or two videos ago and uh, I was getting some really crappy finishes today so I dug out my no name no brand tips I got I was getting much better finishes taking much deeper cuts and much faster cuts at much higher revs flat out around 1400 revs it's getting great finishes but anyway might just save those desco ones for aluminium and everything else and buy some more of these rubbish things whatever they are but anyway so that's that done and uh, got a hell of a mess to clean up here, there's swarf everywhere, so we'll get back into this again tomorrow. Anyway, so yesterday I mentioned that uh, I'm going to modify this. And looking at this stack here, I had in my mind when I designed this in Confusion 24-7 that these things are only going to be about 10 millimeters thick. Well, that's two and a half times that, and that's three times that. So. You're starting to lose a fair bit of uh, travel by the time you stick this underneath there she's a fair way up 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 the column you know so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece out of here 30 mil move move that bottom up into here about 30 millimeters which is what that is might even go 35 but, but probably best to have the bottom of that flush with the bottom of this so that's what I'll do today I'll cut this out move it up and re-weld it back in there before uh, moving on to this shaft. Now I'm going to have to draw a hole all the way up through this so the shorter it is the better because uh, one thing I suffer with on the lathe is, is length so um, the shorter that is the better. So that's what I'll do today. Well viewers, uh, if you had no idea what the hell I was talking about this morning, there it is. So I've chopped it down, I ended up cutting 40mm out of it well it all back up this one's now all drilled up and bolted up to it and now that I've got a nice flat surface to work off I might clamp this up in the uh, milling attachment on the lathe and uh, fly cut this surface here so that uh, I can be pretty much assured they're parallel to each other but had a gut full for today and a bit of fair bit of cleaning up to do because uh, there's that much metal filings and everything from cutting this thing up and re-grinding it afterwards I've got to clean it up before it turns into rust so on with that and I'll back into it again tomorrow alrighty new day new challenge so I've mounted all this up in here and uh, clamped it up tight and uh, I'll move the camera in a second I'll show you I've made one pass but it's still a little early in the morning to be make too much noise so I'll come back to this later but uh, I'll move the camera and I'll show you uh, what I got first pass I was measuring everything up yesterday as I tacked all this together, but obviously uh, I made a fair bit. But anyway, so that was my first pass, and I reckon uh, maybe just one more pass will get there. Alrighty, so I'm having to be uh, 
ultra careful with this because this is hanging back over sort of in line with the chuck and I've got to take it very easy and um, and not get too close to anything so I don't want to smash everything up have things fly out of there and smack me in the head Still got a tiny little bit here, so we'll go one more pass. Well, hopefully you can see that this one little tiny bit just here that missed, but I can live with that. So that's that. I finished off that other housing, I've drilled all the holes and everything in it and worked out how long the shaft needs to be and I'm glad I moved it up in there 40 mil now because I wouldn't be making the shaft in here now otherwise. This, this is about as big as long as I can get. But anyway, we'll, uh, I'll just I'll machine a little bit of this and then uh, I'll, uh, I'll leave you and I'll come back when we got close to getting a few features in here. Uh, if you're wondering what this is, they grind a bit in me again yesterday. Dang thing, hates me. Anyway, let's get going on this. It looks to me like I'm turning tapers already, but it doesn't matter, there's a lot to uh, come off this, so we'll just keep going. I'll bring you back later, this will take forever. Well viewers, uh, I knew this spindle was going to take me some time, but it's Thursday already and we're still working on this. It's unbelievable. Uh, I spent a lot of time there yesterday and I'm still only down around 30 mil. So anyway, I drew this up this morning so that I don't stuff up. I've got to get down to 20 mil for the bulk of it. I'm saying 16 there, but this has to have a, well, it's a moss taper in here and an 11 mil or 716 hole up through here. So I might... I might increase that either to 18 or even leave it at 20. This is where the pulley will attach on the top. Uh, I was hoping to get down to 25 yesterday afternoon, so that or just above it, so that I could let it cool overnight and finish it, because that's a bearing size there. Anyway, so I'll, I'm going to persevere with this and uh, just keep going, get this down to 25. I've got a bit too much up in the chuck up there, so I'll have to finish this back end of it later on when I turn it around. But anyway, that's where we're at, so I'll we'll press on. Alrighty, made some pretty good headway here this morning. A uh, couple of changes of plans as I was going. I uh, decided I'd put another step in here, considering there's a, a tapered hole in the inside there, so a bit more meat here wouldn't hurt. This is about 0.8 above size I want, so is that. And this is about the right length now, so uh, I'm just going to let it cool down for a while and, uh, and bring this and this to size for bearings. And then we'll get on with uh, finishing off. And I've decided to make this 19 mil here for the uh, for the pulley because I want to get as much of this up inside the uh, spindle, which takes a 20 mil. It's got a 20 mil bore in it, so the more I can get up in there, the better. Alrighty. So uh, after allowing it all to cool down, I've got this to a perfect fit for the bearing and this one. Uh, now I've just got a, a round nose a grooving tip. I'm just going to clean up this corner, this corner, and this corner. I'm a little anxious being this close to the chuck because uh, grooving tools on this thing can have a tendency to bite in.
leave that like that because the bearing stops about should stop about this about five six mil short of that anyway beautiful better fit than the outer rings alrighty so this is the state of play and if you really enjoyed this whole thing give it a great big thumbs up and uh, and if you haven't yet subscribed consider subscribing um, still a fair bit to do to this yet uh, I'm going to drill a bloody great big hole up in there and as you can see I'm not going to get that in there and do it but I have a planned stand and uh, try and drill that hole in there I also need to flip it around and um, again drill it and I've got these two uh, Morse taper reamers I bought and try and ream that but after spending the amount of time on this that I have, I don't really want to wreck it trying to ream those. I've never done that before. So what I will do is, before I try doing it in this, is make a sample one and uh, just see how it all goes. But it's Friday and we're out around 20 minutes. So that will be in episode 5 or part 5 of this build. So make sure you come back next week and, uh, and see how we go with that. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Bye bye.